Hey everyone, welcome to another Tip Tuesday. You guys have really responded well to these, so we're gonna keep them right on rolling. You're probably sick of hearing me talk, and I'm definitely not the expert. So I'm standing next to Max here. Max is one of our sales managers here, and one of his major jobs is when people come in with their trade-in, he goes out and evaluates the quality and integrity of the camper, correct? Yes, sir. So what I've asked Max to do is go through five common things that you should look for if you're buying a used camper, either from a dealership or from an individual person. So Max, take it away. What's the first thing we should look for? Uh, Dan, the first thing that I always go take a look at, and it's one of the easiest things to do, is I get down and I do a visual inspection of the tire. Okay. Uh, you know, with, with cars, we always talk about tread. With RVs, almost always the tread's great because we're not towing them very much. Right. The thing I'm looking at is the sidewall. Uh, I'm inspecting the sidewall. I'm looking for evidence of cracks. Uh, it's called uh, weather checking okay. or dry rot. I'm, I'm doing a visual inspection. And then the other thing I'm looking for is most tires will have a, a date okay. on the side and it'll tell you when the tire was built. It's a four digit number. Mm -hmm. uh, the first two numbers are the week the tire was built. The second two numbers are the date or the, uh, I'm sorry, the year the tire was built. And okay. I'm taking a look at those to see how old the tires are. Right. Because the sidewalls might look great, but if you look at the date and it could be 10 years old, those tires really ought to be replaced. So now tires are not necessarily a deal breaker on buying a used camper. You could say, hey, I'm just gonna have to invest in tires, right? But exactly. it's, it's one of those things you need to look at, especially if you're planning on towing it quickly because the last thing you want is a blowout and you wreck your brand new used camper that you just bought, right? Absolutely. Okay, Dan, the, the second thing I like to take a look at, uh, once again, we're on the outside of the, of the, the RV, is I make sure I put all the slide rooms out uh -huh. and then I go along and I do a visual inspection of the floor of the slide out. Okay. Uh, I do a visual inspection and I also like to push along with my fingers all these edges along underneath here where I can reach. Uh, we run into problems from time to time with a soft slide out floor. Okay. Uh, water gets in there, you know, sometimes it's from above, sometimes it's from right along here. But I press, I feel, I look along there, uh, make sure everything's solid. So. I just talked about in the video yesterday the importance of slide maintenance and taking care of your um, your why did I just go blank your seals taking care of your seals you can seriously drop the value of your camper by not taking care of those and having a wet a weak floor on your slide right I mean that's exactly Ty tires tires are easy to, to replace. You, know, you kind of know what that's going to cost you. The problem with slide floors yep. is that's a major expenditure. They're going to have to uh, take this whole slide out, replace the floor, and put the slide back exactly. in. Exactly. I mean, you can easily spend $1,500, $2,000, even $2,500 to replace a slide floor. Uh -huh. And the problem is once you see the beginnings of deterioration, it, it's only going to get worse. And actually, you know, you start digging in there, you're probably going to find a lot more damage than you even realize. That's a, that's a major expenditure. So guys, really important one, make sure you take the time to inspect your slides whenever you're buying a used camper. So we're moving around campers. We're showing different things. We're on to number three, if I count correctly, right? Exactly. What's your number three? I'm guessing that has to do with the outside again. Yeah, we're still on the outside, Dan. Okay. And, and, and you know, you can't do this on, on every RV, but if I've got a ladder, uh, then I'm gonna climb that ladder and I'm gonna do a visual inspection of the roof. Okay. Uh, wherever I can reach from the ladder, I'm gonna press around and push uh, because once again, uh, it's pretty easy to have water issues. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm, I'm inspecting the roof. Do I feel any soft spots? Do I see any tears? Uh, and then in addition to up the ladder, I'm also doing a walk around on the outside, looking at the edge of the roof. Do I see any snags, tears? Cause that's a pretty common, it's easy to do, but it's also easily to for, easy to forget. And that's going up at least a few times a year and checking all of your seals, hitting it with the die core if you need to, right? I mean, it's, it's an easy thing to do, but it's easily forgotten. It's easily forgotten. And you know, the, the, the person, the, the customer that's trading in the RV, or the person you're looking at their RV, they may not even realize it All right. because they're probably not getting up there. They don't know. Right. Uh, or they might have a snag from a tree or branch and have no idea that it's even there. 
So again, another very expensive thing when it comes to buying a used camper. You think you're getting a great deal on a used camper, but if you've got problems with your roof, you're looking at a, a big expense. You look at a big expense, or you need at least to be aware of it. Right. You know, it doesn't mean you can't use the camper, but you just want to be aware of it. And, and for us as a dealer, it's a big deal because we're going to put it out there and then sell it. And we either need to disclose that, right. or we need to make a repair. Perfect. Okay, Max, we're finally inside. I feel like we've really inspected the crap out of the outside of a camper, right? Which is a good thing. Like you want to make sure your 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 money's well spent. Yep, that's that's where you want to start. Right. So, what are things that I'm going to look for in here? I think we're on number four. Yeah, number four. What are we going to look for? Well, kind of related to to step number three is I'm going to go inside the coach. I'm going to open cabinets around the rear. Uh, I'm going to do a visual inspection. I'm, I'm looking for water stains or if I see any kind of, of rippling in the material, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be pushing around. I'm going to look inside these cabinets and really you, you got to, it's not just a visual, you need to actually dig in, do a little pushing, push gently uh, because <laughs> if, if there is major water damage, you know, you're going to push right through. Right. But I'm feeling for soft spots. Uh, I've had situations where visually it looked fine, but when I started pushing around uh, the walls in that area, I'm looking for any kind of water damage. Well, uh, let's let's face it, and, and you, you always want to expect the best out of people, but that's not always the case. You could, if let's say that I had a camper with a white ceiling and I had some water damage and water, I could always go in there and do a little kills before I sell sure. it. And hide the fact that I have a leak. So, but to your point, between a visual feel and a, and a act, or a visual look and a feel, you're hopefully catching those things, right? That's right. And, and you're gonna, you're gonna perform the same inspection in the rear of the coach, up in the front of the coach, I'm gonna open up closet doors, cabinet doors, do that same feeling around. Might need to get a, might need to get a flashlight out, might need to get my, my phone flashlight out yep. uh, because it may be dark. And I'm doing the same inspection around bath vents, skylights, uh, anywhere you see a vent. Uh, those You want to do this, perform the same uh, if inspection. You're not, if you're not able to fully walk the roof from the outside, to your point, going around and checking those vents and around that, that's going to help you further even understand what's going on on the roof. Yes, because you know most travel trailers don't have ladders. Right. I can't do that step number three outside, but I can do an inspection inside. And if I see water damage inside, then the you know there's a good chance there's a problem either with a, with a seal with the caulking. Uh, so you want you want to look at that over pretty hard. Okay, guys, we're on to number five, and I think they're all equally important, right? I think the tire is the least. Tire's the easiest problem. The to easiest take care of. problem to take care of, exactly. you know, not that big a deal. The rest of them are kind of doozies, and I'm sure your number five is a doozy. What do you got for us? Uh, another structural item, Dan, that's really important. Uh, when I walk into the coach, when I walk in the entry door, I'm, I'm kind of watching, I'm looking for, for the same thing we talked about. I'm looking for signs of, of stains, uh -huh. uh, discoloration of the, of the linoleum. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stepping, you know, lightly, uh, especially up against the entry door, looking for signs of potential water damage. Uh, or water damage, or it could be uh, the floor could be starting to delaminate. Right. Uh, so it could be from water, it could just be uh, from the manufacturing process, but I'm checking for soft spots. Uh, not that you can't live with it, but is it, you know, is it water? Is it just happened to be the way the coach is built? But, but it's an issue. Now, something to consider, I may be throwing a monkey wrench in this, but bear with me, okay? If I saw a stain here, that's not necessarily indicative of a leak at my door. That could be my water heater, my fridge. It could be a leak somewhere else in the coach that's just migrated that way, correct? Yeah, I've seen situations where maybe the water heater happened to be, you know, installed in a cabinet near the entry door. Maybe a line broke at some time. You know, maybe it was a month ago. Maybe it was five years ago. Right. Uh, so, yeah, it's not necessarily because there's an issue at the entry door. Uh, it, it, it could just be to do with the seal that's under the threshold there. So that could be a really small, easy problem, or that could be a fairly large problem. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. What and, else do we look for? Well, right and then related to the entry door, I'm also uh, taking a look around slide rooms. You know, I'm checking for potential issues. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, 
if, if there's material laying there, I'm, I'm checking out along the slide floors. I'm looking down at the bottom of the floor here. Sometimes I'll notice discoloration here at the fascia board or on the wall. And that's, once again, that's a sign of water damage. Uh, I'm kind of looking for stains, pushing up along on the floors. And then, you know, in addition around the floor, I'm looking over, over the slide room here at the top for any potential water. Uh, there's a header beam up here uh, that's pretty major to the structure of the RV. You know, is there any, do I see any softness? Do I see any evidence of water damage? So guys, there you have it. Mr. Expert Max here giving us five things to look for. Max, a, a couple of things I just want to make sure that we clarify. These points, uh, a consumer should be looking at whether they're buying it from an individual or a dealership. Like, I, we can only speak to our dealership. We disclose. If we find something wrong with the camper, we list that on the camper. But you should still, as a consumer, do your due diligence when you're buying anything used and walk around, ask questions, and check these things, correct? Yes. I mean, you, you, you need to kind of figure out, okay, what is something that I can take care of? You know easily repair put new tires on or is it something that's it's major uh, that might not even be worth making the investment you know water damage it, it's tough to repair it's expensive to repair and it might be a reason to, to move on well thank you so much for doing the video guys this has been another tip Tuesday uh, if you have suggestions for next week's tip Tuesday send them in I've got a lot of people around here like Max that know what they're talking about that I'd be happy to grab happy Tuesday everyone